Hey guys, Omni here. We're about to dive into the season six finale of Legends of Tomorrow. The previous episode uh, saw Bishop get one up on John as we also learned about Spooner's actual origin, what happened to her mother, and kind of her ties to her abilities or powers and what, you know, kind of got her integrated in this entire situation. Um, and it was pretty interesting. I like that aspect of it. The John stuff with Bishop, obviously, like, if you've been watching the reactions up to this point, you know my feelings on how they've been handling Constantine up until now. Um, I've still been pretty mixed on this season overall, though I've been having fun here and there throughout, as typical with the show. Just I think, like, the main story bits have been a little iffy. Um, got some questions about Bishop's motivations here going forward. It does seem a little bit of a change from where they were before, but he's gone through some changes, so I'm willing to hear him out and see where this whole thing goes. Uh, but the team is in a bit of a pickle. John is seemingly dead. Um, so I'm curious to see what's going to happen there. I've seen some pretty interesting theories as to how they might close out the character of Constantine in the show. Uh, since we know this will be the final appearance of the character, assuming we see him in this episode. I haven't watched any of the previews for this episode, so I don't really have any expectations on what is going to happen. Um, so I don't know. You guys might know if you've already seen it, if he actually does make an appearance. Maybe he was in the trailer or something. I don't know. But just in case he is, um, I'm just wondering how that'll go. Like maybe some people suggested maybe he becomes part of the green, uh, which has its ties to Swamp Thing. It's like what all connects all natural energy in the universe together which is usually tied to plants like swamp thing and stuff like that so maybe that's his way of connecting to that we know he's uh made reference to swamp thing many times and even in his phone alec holland shows up which is not a, that's a little detail that i missed and somebody actually pointed that out for me in the comments so i love when you guys do that so like when i'm in it like it's not, I, I can't always like skim through and see these little details. And most of the time I don't have time to go back and like retread through an entire episode again. Um, sometimes I catch it during the editing, but sometimes I'm just trying to get through it too. in that way to meet the deadlines and whatnot. But thank you guys so much as always is what I'm saying <laughs> at the end of the day. But I'm curious to see how the season comes to a close. I know I've talked about how, you know, we're only going to get about a month break from the show before season seven airs. And with how I've been feeling about it and with how busy the coming months is going to be, because outside of just the DC pocket that we cover here on the channel, there's a lot of other stuff coming down, especially in the next couple of months, that's going to be really tough to keep up with. And this is one of those shows, considering the fact that things have been a little rocky for me, I haven't really been enjoying it as much as I used to. Um, if I have to cut a show from the lineup, it might end up being this one. So I want to go ahead and let you guys know, um, but I'll still try to give you guys my, I'm still going to be watching it. It's just, I don't know if I'll have the time to spend six to eight hours uh, working on recording and editing a video each weekend uh, with everything else that's kind of coming down the pipeline. Um, and also whether or not I'm actually enjoying the show. So it does kind of like, it's a lot of different things weighing in there. So I just wanted to let you guys know, I'll still be letting you guys know my opinions and stuff like that as we go through it, if it's even not in a reaction format. Um, so we'll have that. And always, if you want to know what we're covering or what we're talking about, how I'm feeling about anything at all, join my Discord or follow me on my socials and I'll definitely let you know there for sure, no matter what. Anyway, guys, that all being said, if you want to see my full-length unedited reaction to this entire episode, make sure you check that out over on Patreon, or if you become a member here on the channel, helps support the channel. I'm working towards getting an editor to try to help me with some of the workload here going forward. That is a goal I've got right now. I'm uh, trying to figure that out, and uh, that's one way you can help move things forward for me, uh, for you guys as well. So guys, that all out of the way. Let's go ahead and dive into the season finale. Here we go. Okay, so Mick's okay. Mick's all right. A little smoky, but he's all right. I saved them. Why? Those are Mick's kids you're talking about. I'll make some family. Look, I get why Bishop family. Ship, why? The bomb obliterated Gideon's mainframe, which means we are stranded. You're stranded. I still got my ship. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> that gyrating bastard. <laughs> that gyrating bastard. That's an apt description. Oh my God, B. Oh, hey guys. What happened to my couch? 
You know, someone also pointed out last episode in the comments, like, where the hell was Bayrod the entire time? We didn't see him at all. And I didn't even think about it. And I guess he was just laying on the couch and surviving an explosion. I knew something was up with John. I shouldn't have gone home. I should have been here. Oh, no, that's right. He went home. I forgot about that. He went, he told Zari he was going to go home and like talk to his parents about the totem and stuff. Gone? What do you mean gone? Like he escaped? He's dead. Oh, that's not possible. He, he, he's John Constantine. He, he can't be dead. He decomposed into the ground and all that was left was this. Whoa. Yeah. Can I smoke it? much for an invasion it's a scout they're watching us you need to run now oh shit the zagarons <laughs> nice Shoot her. I mean, she'll heal. Where's the other one? Huh? They were the scouts then. That was them ringing the dinner bell. Oh, great. There's more coming. We are so screwed. You know, it would make sense if this tied into the Flash season eight beginning, like with the alien invasion and that, but I don't think it will. Completely separate, I imagine. I am the Mushroom Whisperer. Talk to me, John. I don't think John's dead. I think he's inside this little guy. Just look. Ah, I'm back. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Oh, God damn it. By the time you see this recording, I expect John will be dead. The fountain will also be dead. Otherwise possible egg on my face. <laughs> and because I can literally think Sarah's thoughts, about now is the time that Sarah Lance has figured out my plan as the new Adam and Eve. Sarah, your mind must be racing, realizing that the only one who can save the fountain is me. Maybe the younger version of him can reverse schmience it and get us an antidote. It goes against every instinct you have, which means Bishop would never expect it. If we only ever do what we <laughs> do, he will always be one step ahead. There's only one way to wage a war against yourself. And that is to have a what would Sarah never do day? <laughs> I mean, it's I guess. A really bad idea. It's a terrible idea. I'm glad that they just straight up said it was Vancouver this time around. Ava Prime. <laughs> the neural network is still overloading. Oh, I'm never gonna get this right. You are working, Ava. How are you? Was that a chrono dimensional portal? The less you know, the better. Headline, we're time travelers and we need your I must become wildly famous for my genius. If time travelers come looking for my help, I can. I must become a really big deal. <laughs> that ego on this dude. Oh, no. Uh, all right, smarty pants. You want to help us save the world? Whoa. This is interesting. Whoever made this is a certified genius, an evil genius. What a genius. Yes, an evil genius who's not like anyone in this room. I mean, there's <laughs> in this poison that... I spoke to John. He is in the mushroom. He wants to talk to us. And we all got to eat him. Oh, God. Hey, Rod, what are you doing, man? <laughs> Last thing we need to be doing is tripping on mushrooms. Hmm. Yeah, well, isn't it, uh, what would Sarah never do, Dave? Just saying. <laughs> we already played that game, and now it's time to prepare for an alien invasion. So, please, everyone, just go make yourself useful, okay? You're right.
<laughs> Are you alive? Not exactly. I'm present. My life force is the only thing keeping the Fountain and Sabuna alive. If I leave, they both perish. I must stay as long as I can. Sorry it had to be this way. Do you remember all those years ago when I said that stable relationships weren't right for you and me? I was wrong. Loving and being loved, that is the point. There's one last thing I need to tell you. It's the secret to all life. Well, all right. All systems functioning. Jump coordinates plotted. Do it. Executing. Powering down. No, you don't. <laughs> We had the mushroom, didn't you? Yes. And I saw John. What? Yeah. He told me what this is about. He told me what everything is about. He said... Are they just trip? Yeah, is it just a trip and not actually him? We are all connected. Okay. I think I saw that on a bumper sticker once. <laughs> Spooner and the fountain are connected. Does that mean the fountain's restored and we stop the invasion? Yeah, nah. Go to the future. Grab Clark and Kara and Barry. Bring them back here. Zip these things in the space and the sun and you're done. I mean, marry me now, today, before the apocalypse. What are you talking about? We can't just... Why not? We're gonna have to fight those things anyway. Babe, we've got our friends, we've got our vows, and we've got four hours. What else do we need? I don't know. Maybe for the world not to be. <laughs> yeah. Wedding montage. You waited until right now to write your vows? <laughs> Sorry. It's gonna be fine. How? Sarah already wrote her vows, Gary. Sarah. She's gonna say some very beautiful things to you. It's not helping. No, no, no. And then. You are going to look deep into those gorgeous blue eyes of hers and say what you feel. I feel sick. Don't say that. I don't... <laughs> what do you... Do you want me to improvise? Me? Yeah, you! Because I know what you say in that moment will be perfect. Can you please walk me down the aisle? <laughs> this is going to make his life. It would be my greatest honor. <laughs> Thanks for coming. It's not like you gave me much choice. You brought the kids. <laughs> well, last time they were left on the ship, they almost blew up. <laughs> bishop. Young Bishop. Can't exactly say it was love at first sight. <laughs> You did look really good in that pantsuit. <laughs> the moment I got to know My life before you was a perfect fabrication. You brought chaos into my tidy, predictable existence, and um, you pretty much brought me to life. So I vow to you to live this life together. Call captains forever, baby. No. So if there's no objections. He needs to get that exhaust fixed. Wow, he just blotted out the sun to make him wake up early, it seems like. Is that me? <laughs> They didn't even get to kiss. Oh! Well, there were thousands of ships that landed, so. <laughs> this, uh, 
This wood house. I mean, unless it's like signs. It's not going to work all that well. I don't imagine these things are weak to wood and water. Aren't they poisonous? Oh! You guys seeing this? What the fuck? You gave him my powers. It's a fountain. I can feel that it's waking up. It's like it's like John said. We're all connected. Need power saver. Whoa! What the fuck? Some uh, Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End kind of stuff right here. Fighting while giving the uh, whole exchange. Do you, Ava, take this woman to be your lawfully Speed it up. Speed it up, Nate. I do. Kiss the damn bride. Is it going to be a big ass mushroom? <laughs> Their mushroom allergy? Really? It's time. Already? Damn, that was quick. I'll give you one last chance. So they go to eat Bishop. It's like getting eaten by a bunch of little Zoidberg heads. The shit to my soul now belongs to a demon once again. And the fountain is very happy that I'm no longer bound to <laughs> Okay. Who has this coin now? So it just re really just reset John way right back to square one. Where he started with the legends at the beginning. Okay. I don't know how I feel about that. Kind of nervous. Things rarely wrap up in a neat little bow for us. A wave rider just came in, blew up their wave rider, and left. What? What the hell? What kind of end is that? Ah, oh, god damn it! What does that tell us? The legends are the villains next season. I'm so confused. Um. I like them going back to get a uh, young Bishop and seeing that that was funny. Bishop's end though, not very satisfying. Uh, I will say the fight with the Zagarons coming into the house was pretty interesting. I don't understand the whole we're all connected thing because unless it's talking about the planet as a whole, does the Fountain of Imperium have the ability to just work within the team? Is it just referring to the team or all life on the planet being connected? So like, if need be, if Spooner was around, could they be like, all right, now you're a Kryptonian. Now you've got Kryptonian powers. Or is it just exclusive to this group? I thought it was really interesting seeing them like micromanage, switch and swap in their powers around so that they were healing through from the Zagron poisoning while putting the powers in somebody else. When Mick ran out of ammo, they gave him a wind totem somehow even though it didn't physically give him a totem. Um, it was a little fun bit they played around with. The, I'd say in the, in the episode itself, the things that I thought were fun were the that bit and then the bit of them uh, trying to do things Sarah would never let them do. I thought that was fun, though they didn't go as far with it as I kind of thought they might. Um, and then John and the Shroom thing, wh whatever that is... <laughs> So, like, he ended up going to hell. He did die. So, he just traded his soul again with another demon so that he could come back to Earth. 
yet again, putting him in the exact same spot he began the entire series in. Uh, he's not going to be with Zari. He's got his own thing to go off in. Is he going to ever show up as Constantine again? Or is this just so that the character is available just in case Warner Brothers allows them to use the character at some other point? Do they have other plans for the Constantine character outside of the HBO show that they're already working on? Um, I don't know. I don't know, man. I wasn't too satisfied with that either. Um, the Spooner stuff was... I don't know. I don't know how to feel about that either. Um, I liked Ava and the stuff about Ava and the wedding, the moments with Gary. I really liked that scene because it just, re that really felt like it connected all the way back to like when we first met those two characters. Um, I really liked that moment. Um, out of weddings, as far as it goes in the Arrowverse, not the best <laughs> either. I'm happy for them, but I, I feel like it was just like a rush. They didn't get to really enjoy it. And I don't think it was very well done either. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. Out of all the Legends finales, I think this is also my least favorite. Ugh. And I hate <laughs> feeling like a being a downer, but this is how I feel about it at the moment. Um... Mick, his send-off, it felt a little rushed, though I do like the scene with them talking about how they started on the ship and could they have imagined where they would end up now. Uh, of course, Mick's not going to be a regular anymore on the show. I imagine we won't see him that much um, next season either. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Um, there's not a lot I liked in it, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I didn't feel like most things had a really solid resolution that at least satisfied the journey we went through to me. I feel like, again, they just didn't do John justice. And that's kind of been the case for a long time. And I know a lot of people have been just kind of tired of it being all about John. I wish the season was more about Sarah, but it definitely didn't feel like it. It definitely did feel like they were trying to make it more about John again. And I'm curious what the show will be like with him not being in it and who this, this new character that Matt Ryan's going to be playing um, moving forward in the show. Because he's not leaving. Matt Ryan's not leaving the show. He's just the character. He will no longer play. He's not playing the character of Constantine anymore. So uh, th that dynamic will be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I've got really, really mixed feelings on this entire season in general. And that's kind of where we're at the end. Of, at, I, that's how I'm feeling with most of the CW shows right now, man. I felt I had a very mixed feeling at the end of The Flash season seven, this last season of that. So far, uh, surprisingly, I've thought uh, Batwoman Season 2 wasn't too bad. I still liked Season 1 more. Um, but, you know, Star Stargirl so far, I mean, we're only like four or five episodes in. So, like, it feels like more Stargirl. So, it's that's feeling strong. Supergirl, which has been usually pretty consistent at being at the bottom of my list on a lot of things. I've been enjoying that that show more than I've been enjoying uh, the Flash and this, which is weird because <laughs> I mean it's the final season, so I really think they're kind of like trying their best to bring that about, and it's a little more ridiculous still. But I don't know, the character writing seems a little bit stronger for me. But um, and then you just have Superman Lois, which is just blowing everything out of the water for me. I don't know, man. Maybe I'm just, maybe my expectations for things have just altered with everything else going on and it's just not enough anymore for me. I never really wanted to go that route. Or maybe it's just actually the season itself. I don't know what it is. I just didn't really feel connected with this season in general at the end of it. Not the, really the storylines. I, You guys know how I felt about the, what they did with Sarah 
And after that point, I really, I don't know. I, I wasn't disengaged from the rest of the season. It just, it definitely left a bad taste in my mouth how they treat, it just further treated the character again. I don't know. And for nobody of Sarah's to actually be here, considering, you know, there is a Laurel out there. There is her, her father is alive to, for those characters not to be at her wedding. I don't know. I think some people are blowing off some fireworks, so I don't know if you guys are going to hear that or not. But, uh, yeah, it's just weird. It's weird. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just being a little curmudgeon today. I don't know. Surprisingly enough, like, this, which I've kind of been, like, a curmudgeon about The Walking Dead for a long time, and I'm covering the season 11 uh, final season for the show right now, and I've been enjoying that. So it's just like, I don't know, man. I don't know what's going on. The shows I used to love are just like not doing it for me right now, man. I don't know what it is. Is it just me? Is anybody else feeling like this right now? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And it's just this same feeling that it's like if I if I need to, it's this this will be the show that I cut loose uh, as far as reactions go for uh, going forward. I might still do watch alongs because there's literally next to no editing involved for that because I got a template set up for it. So I just have to cut out the commercial breaks. So I might still do that. So if you're interested in that capacity, I might keep those going up on the channel at least because I, like I told you guys, I'm still going to be planning to watch the show. Um, I just, uh, I just at this point with how much I've been enjoying it right now, unless season seven kicks off with like a banger, like, I don't know if I can justify the amount of time that goes into making the highlights for the channel, man, when it's just me. And I, I know you guys, there's plenty of people here that's on the channel that love watching these. Um, I just, I don't know, man. Sometimes reality has to kick in a little bit, and I'm sorry, guys. I really am. I really am. I, like, I don't want to, like, redu like to drop anything. And I d We'll see. We'll see. Who knows? Maybe I'll feel different later after I kind of let it breathe a little bit. But guys, what did you think of this season? What did you think of the finale? What did you think of the conclusions? What do you think of where they're leaving John Constantine at the end of this whole thing? Sound off the comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. We'll carry on the conversation after the video. Remember, if you want to see the full unedited reaction, it's going to be on Patreon or become a member here on the channel. Uh, we can talk about this later uh, in the comments, or you can come join the Discord and uh, talk about it there. Links to all that's in the description of this video. Shout out to our channel legends, Manny Share, Ryan Kerr, Jason Coma, Philly Vane, and Yuri Korskov. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. And anyway, that's been Legends Season 6 for what it is. <laughs> so, hope you guys enjoyed at least the journey along the way. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Take care, everybody.